Howdy everyone. know that I'm starting up the stream. Add my tea, we're ready to rock. Although, I'm not sure exactly what we're rocking on tonight. I've got some interesting questions for discussion. We could do some refactoring. Let's see how it goes, how we feel. the time. Slightly earlier than I said, but that's okay. Because my uh, the time I said I'd start this evening is slightly later than it normally would be, so being early is good. Ah, uh, Laurie says the audio is fine. We like that. Straight out of the box and frame rate looks good. It's nice not to have to um, fight with that. How's everyone doing? Wednesday evening here in the UK. Got the back door open. It's not too hot. It's very cool. Actually, at the moment in the UK, it's not um, unpleasant at all. So whilst we wait for people to join us, um, what have I been doing this week? Oh, apart from taking lots of daft calls, I've been doing some more PCB work. I don't know if I've got a copy of that PCB here. Uh, let's get that up. That's a good one to start with. Let me, um, oh, damn it on the other window just let me get a copy of this so that's it will be it will be it will be within the tiles um uh, damn it what is it called Files starter. Try and see if we can copy that across. Yeah, with me, just one second. This has changed one. Well. So I'm just trying to copy it from uh, my laptop. if that's come across it's 
definitely worth looking at this. If I can import it, hold on. Where do I want to save it? Let's just save it in here temporarily. So what I was playing around with here, let me just bring it up. Let's just turn off the IDE. Let's open up this. You can see that there. So this was kind of a starter tile. Let me explain myself. Um, for those that have been following along, you'll be familiar that we did a development kit for early adopters, very early adopters. Um, moving forward, however, I want to do a starter kit. Um, so early adopter users can get on onto the um, uh, onto the Black Edge platform. We have some issues around um, pricing, which I'll come to in a sec. Uh, Lloyd's just asking about, have I sent the new PCB order off yet? No, I haven't finished it because I'm still adding to it. So I've got to get the starter tile finished, which we could do some work on this evening, potentially. Um, so the issue I have is, oh, I've got a really scratchy leg, I think. I just wonder if I've been bitten by something. I wonder if, so in order to, I can't remember whether we talked about this in the last stream or not. But one of the issues I have is I've, I've, I've set the account up uh, on electrons. Now, if we are, you know, the advantage of electrons for European shopping is that they can deal with what's called the uh, international one stop shop. Uh, it's a fly interface the ioss enables tax to be prepaid upon goods one can then get a reference from any order that's ordered to arrive into europe from electrons that will mean on the package it effectively can fly glide smoothly through customs um, and just to give you out I mean poor old Western longs kit only arrived today and I can't remember when I sent that it's it's, it's been sitting in customs for well over a week um, uh, he's actually got it now and he, he's been using it this afternoon hopefully a pop along this evening but what a nightmare um and i think the reason is um this this isn't something i've done before but shipping things at that price range forces you to go outside of ioss so whatever we do we need the configuration to come in product pricing not including shipping because i think shipping separate it needs to come in at 150 euros or less than 150 euros because once it goes beyond 150 euros 
the IOSS does not apply. You do not get an IOSS reference. You do not, you know, get your fast past past customs tax clearance. And I don't want that happening when we ship these boards out because although Western Long's been really understanding he's in conversation with us you know on discord on a regular basis a lot of people won't be and they'll just be completely baffled as to why this thing hasn't arrived yet so it's important that we get a price point less than 150 euros very important so we need to look at that um so i'm trying to work out so if someone has a starter kit what should be in that starter kit um, and one of the boards that I was working on this week, which you may have seen if you've been down on Discord, was what I consider to be a starter board. And I am tossing up whether it should be a single tile or a double tile, uh, which is what you see on, on the left here. So, so far, the kind of things that we've agreed will be nice on there, uh, let's just look at this right portion for the moment, is... Um, we've basically got some boosted outputs using the uh, ULN 2003 Darlington array. Um, these connectors on the top here, on the top right, those are, I'll show you what they look like. <laughs> I don't think they're going to show up very well on the screen. Teeny, teeny, tiny. I have shown them before, but it was quite a long time ago. Uh, they are this big teeny tiny and if I show you the back of them and these are surface mount very cool very cost effective and then at one end you've got uh, these pushing connectors right so you can take give you an example got them out Sure, I have one of these. Oh, also, remind me to talk about uh, logos. Don't let me forget. Damn it, where is that? I'm sure I had that out earlier. I have an example, a populated example. Hey, if we get more organised before the show, so I don't have to go searching. And there you are, I've lost it. Ah, that's sticking the one in here. So, what you can do then is... They have these kind of grippers built in. So I can just insert one thus. Can you see how that's it's gone into the end? Here. Yeah. And you want to focus on the um, connector. But the point is, it goes in quite firmly, and it just um, it goes in and grips, and that's very cool because that makes it really easy. And the surface mount, and the important thing here is to make this board affordable. One of the easier way, ways of doing that is using components that are relatively low cost and that can be surface mounted because then I don't have to worry about soldering it. Soldering puts the cost up considerably because it takes a lot, excuse me, a lot longer to do. Um, so that's what these are on the top here. 
So those are the boosted outputs. Those can be used to drive anything from a kind of um, like relays, you know, stuff that requires a bit more current than a normal I.O. will be able to support. God, I'm wrecking the place. And you could also even drive something like, oh my word, what a mess. Something like one of these, which I'm sure you've all probably seen. And again, these are low cost. Great for experimenting, learning how stepper motors drive. And there you see I'm driving it with a Darlington uh, array. Little steppers. Let me unwreck the place again. I need to tidy up a bit more in here. Apologies, folks. Come on. Keep on going. Anyhow, you get the idea. So those are the outputs. And then on the left-hand side of this tile, we have four buttons. And in fact, this seems to be the old version of the... Um, of the tile which is annoying I had a newer version I mean we can arrange it in a minute you'll see um, yeah I've got some LEDs below the outputs and then on here I wonder if I can just move these around I don't know why I've managed to open the older one but so if I go here move what is that what number is that I want to keep that one. Uh, J7, let's get rid of that for the moment. Move this down. And uh, this one. Oops. Move this down. So actually, the arrangement should be more like this. Oh. Do, 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 do. Something like this. So you have more of a gaming sort of arrangement. Can I move all of these? Can I group all of these? I forget how to do it in Canada. So I think I can. Something like that. Which is a better arrangement for the buttons. I think um, most people prefer that. So this tile would effectively have um, those. Uh, let me just take these off for a second. Put those over here. Put those over here. And then one of the other things that we could add in potentially is we could add in analog on the side and this is an interesting one these are the right angle ones i'll come back to what that means in a second so normally on a tile because it can go in one of four different positions you don't know which side like a right hand or a left hand side is going to be exposed outside because there's four tiles so if you look below here, the picture where my finger is, or the screws, screwdriver. Um, for example, on this uh, seven segment LCD, on the right hand side here, I could expose one side of it. But the trouble is, if I put it on the other tile, which is where the VGA tile is now, I wouldn't be able to get access to those ports. However, if you do a double tile, then you always know which way round it's going to be. Yeah, because it's always going to be the same way round. These ports are always going to be exposed uh, on one way or other. So if we did go for a double tile for the starter tile, we could also expose on right angle connectors things like the analog signals, which would give us a bit more flexibility. Um, however, we've got to think what do we put on the left hand side 
what we've got on the right hand side here is pretty obvious we already knew that we needed you know some buttons and some boosted outputs um, by the way the IOs associated with these buttons are also available on these two stemmer headers which can be used to drive stemmer type things or broken out into like DuPont cables because you can get stemmer to DuPont cables um, so the question is what do we put here ideas please folks ideas because if we're going to do a double starter tile we need to put something here and it needs to be surface mount preferably and low cost because this whole double starter tile needs to be low cost what else would you need on a starter tile that's my first question um, and the question obviously assumes that we go with a double tile rather than a single tile so we're looking at low cost starter tile to go out with the starter kits what goes here on the left hand side now there's two ways of looking at it we could say well we have more buttons uh, and we have more outputs one possibility or we have outputs on one side of the tile and lots more inputs on the other side of the tile but I'm not sure that that's the best answer. So ideas please folks, what do we put here? What's good when you're starting to do, you know, play around with the FPGAs, etc. Laurie says, uh, you could put four more buttons, make it work for gaming. Why does four more make it work for gaming? How many buttons do you need for gaming? Eight, is that what you're implying? I mean, the answer is yes, we can. Or are you thinking so that two people can play? Because it's going to be a bit cramped. I'm trying to have two people, you know, with their fingers in. I'm trying to play the game. Um, there are other possibilities we could put. We could put the OLED driver on one of these. Maybe. Just thinking outside the box here. Um, so eight buttons is more common on game consoles, Laurie's saying. Sometimes it's just six. See, eight buttons is quite a lot. Is that so two players can play? Is that the point of having the eight buttons? Or are you saying that even single player needs eight buttons? Extra buttons are things like start, select, A, B, X, Y. So in in the gaming sense, what you're saying, Laurie, is the more buttons the better, up to at least eight is cool. So you one could, for example, have I don't know if I can do it on here. Probably not. Forgive my um keycad. Um ignorance but you mean we could do that or or do you want them together uh, extra buttons for those that's that plus a thumbstick would be good yes but thumbsticks are exceptionally expensive from what I understand all right or do you know of a relatively low cost source on alley or something, an example. <laughs> um, encoders are quite good, but they tend to be through hole. I haven't seen any surface mount encoders, which is a shame. I mean, we could just put some breakout connectors on here of some sort. But what kind of connectors would those be? Um, and I really need it to be surface mount. Let's see about key thing about this. I need to be able to make this easy and low cost to produce. That is critical here. But the buttons won't be in ideal positions for gaming. 
That's very true. Always a limitation with this sort of stuff. kind of things could we put on here we could put an FPC connector for the OLED possibly um, I can get hold of some relatively cheap ones of those um, little buttons yeah they're low cost um, There's all sorts of different connectors we can have, but again, if it's surface mount, that makes it a bit more complicated. We could do connectors for those motors, for example, but how useful is that? I mean, it's nice to be able to put the motors in, but do you want connectors that are specific to those motors? That would be single use, less useful. IO is always good. says Western. Damn it, I'm sure I've been bitten. Can't see. Oh, where's my stuff? I don't have any cream down. Oh, yes, I do. some cream on my leg here. The things I do on the stream. Some five volt pins that is. Um, okay so I don't know how much you caught heard of the um, first bit Western but if you look at the diagram um, on the right hand side there these output pins here are from the Darlington outputs of this array um, and they are sync pins up to about half an amp but yeah your mileage would vary you wouldn't want to put half amp on all of them concurrently but that could be quite high voltage if you wanted it to because it's just taking it to ground <laughs> So if you wanted those to turn on things like relays and stuff, you could do that. So the idea here is to have um, at least five outputs and a power from the tile power. And we could do more of those. I know I've only got five here. You know, we could do seven. 14 you know we've got double tiles here it's entirely possible but would we ever want that many i mean what would you use them for if you had that many a few is useful but would we really want that many seems like an awful lot 14 I mean, what you could do is you could do something like, I can hear Mr. Fox outside, one of them, looking for some food. Oh, don't be annoying. So we could do, we could do, we could do, we could do, something as simple as this <sighs> let me try again let 
we do this kind of thing. Uh, seems slightly wasteful to me, but. Something like this, perhaps, on one side. And then um, more of these on the other side, so. That kind of thing. Move these around a bit. Oops. The question is, are these buttons going to be usable that close together? Why isn't it letting me grasp all of them? I'm very annoying. Something like that. Possibly. Um, uh, yeah, Weston's asking, are motor drivers low cost? I would assume not. The answer is no, they're not low cost. Not only are they not low cost, but they're very, very difficult to get hold of. And I can't have that on the starter board. It needs to be easily accessible. Definitely suppliable. And then, in fact, what I'm doing here is actually, let's just swap that out. I'm thinking of maybe using two of these types of connectors. Oh. Um, rotate, 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 as the pilot says. Print J2, yes. Move. Rotate, rotate. We can have something like this kind of arrangement, I guess. Uh, I know that's not working entirely. Just thinking about it. This needs to be on the bottom. This needs to be on the top because there's a bit more room. If we do decide to go with that. Something like this, possibly. Uh, hmm. And we could do more LEDs, couldn't we? So we could go. And there are four LEDs, probably like maybe four. Yes, a 
copy and paste. Oh, something like that, maybe. Don't do that. I don't want to select all yet. Now I can select all. Oh, it's going to select the top. Oh, no, it didn't. Good. Something like that, maybe. That would give us kind of 12 LEDs. There is a problem with this, which I'll come back to in a sec. But yes, could be populated such. Um, so what's Laurie saying? Following our discussion on ADC, one thing that I'd quite like to see on the tile is one or two excuse me, connectors for oscilloscope probes. So we could experiment with a single 7 mega samples per second channel or two 2.5 mega samples per second channel. But such connectors would not be surface mount and they would probably need to take fairly high voltages. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean about the high voltages, Laurie. Explain if you could. One of the issues I have here is the number of components going up. So I might sacrifice all these LEDs because that's extra placement time and that's going to put the cost up. One other thing here we notice is even if there's four buttons and four buttons, which is eight, we've still got two other connections left. Excuse me a sec. Hmm. Must be the magpies. Hmm. He's finished. And I says, if you're implementing an oscilloscope, oh, right. I say implementing. I was thinking if you measuring the signals on an oscilloscope, you mean if you're doing building an oscilloscope type project. Um, yeah, ideally it could sample 5 or 12 volt sources. What you need to do in those cases is probably use something like an analog MUX lorry. Something like, hold on, can I get a Google window up? Without completely doxing myself. Let's just make this one smaller. New. Uh, um, if you haven't seen these before, these are they. They were very common. Um, I don't know if they have these on the um, uh,
Internally, they look a bit like. <sighs> like this. I'll just show you the browser, folks. Bear with me. like this so basically you have a kind of pmos and nmos input output controlled by digital mux um, and you can get chips that have this so you can have like a four to one mux or a, in this case here look you've got a two to one mux so by using a combination of muxes and then some resistor ladders you can create um, different potential dividers on the input. Um, Laurie's just shown a, um, an implementation he did of the uh, oscilloscope. Picture of it. So, hmm, can I do, uh, this is probably, might end up totally confusing the, um, let's see if I can bring it up in KiCad and draw you the kind of way that we might be able to solve that. So what one could do, let me see, can I, um, Oh, I need to add a component and I've forgotten. Uh, 4XX. Is it 4060, something like that? And clearly a little quad analog switch. So you can bring something like this in. Um, so that's a single chip that has four, um, four controls to it. So, um, these pins at the top control which input is selected from oh wait a minute is is that how this one works let me just remember um one zero six zero Up uh, four zero six six. So basically, yeah, this is the control pin here. And that determines whether this is turned on or that's turned on. So I could, for example, you could have an input here. Um, uh, what's the easiest way of doing this? So, give me my cursor. I should put them all in a line, actually. Um,
which is the easiest way of doing this. Maybe it's not a 4066. Maybe it's. You could have a resistor ladder. from input to output such that in fact, can I use one of these And then you have the signals all connected together as an input. Thus, so basically, what you end up with here is a programmable attenuator. So the signal comes in here, say, um, oops. So the signal comes in here. And it can go through any one of these, depending whether they're switched on or not. If I just switch one of them on, it goes through one RK5 over an RK5. And this should be ground as well, by the way. Um, uh, let's just add that in, it's because it's not clear. Oh, come on, please, please work, copy, paste, paste, <laughs> it's not pasting, I do not understand. Oh. Am I? Am I copying the wrong thing here? Copy, paste. God, this is annoying. Sorry, forgive me. I don't quite understand why this isn't doing what it should do. Finally. So this acts as a programmable potential divider with the input here and the output Oops, here. Stop it, please stop doing that. Just drop the line. Uh, 
Normally this works. It's because I'm trying to do it at this funny size. There we go. So the signal comes in at the top here and it can go through either a single one of these or a combination of them. Um, and because we're adding resistance in parallel, uh, we've created effectively what's like a resistor ladder or a programmable divider for the input. Um, and the, the resistance value here will set, will set what we attenuate the signal voltage down to. And I think the these these muxes are capable of handling 18 volt or something like that. Um, I better check actually. So let's look at the Texas Instruments one. Mm, why didn't it show me the data sheet? Um, so, what does it say? VCC 9 volts. Uh, hmm. Is it 9 volts? DC supply voltage. Um, high level input, low level. On resistance. High level inputs. Yeah, I think for the normal CMOS ones, it's higher. Um, maybe I'm looking at the wrong ones here. Just look at one of our choices. So if I look at the original CD4066 data sheet, <clears throat> so let's just switch to that. Um, 15 volt digital or seven plus or minus 7.5 volt peak to peak switching. For the uh, CMOS quad bilateral switch, so that might might do it. So we could go up to about fifteen volts in terms of the input. We just zoom in a bit, guys, so you can see. Electrical characteristics. VDD up to 15. Um, is it relative to the switching voltage? Can't remember. I mean, can we run the. Minute, what are the pins? Does it have different um, signal in and out? VDD, VSS. So VDD, presumably. We can keep VDD low. But does that limit our range of what we're switching? VDD 5 volts. Switch output voltage. 
electrical characteristic switch output voltage or is that saying that we have to um, increase our supply voltage on it for it to go up to that voltage Um, does this tell me here? DCC equals VDT. It seems to indicate. Um, lower input than output. So the point is here. I'm not. I'm not sure if this is the right device to do this with. We've got a number of choices. So, what I'm suggesting here is, in order to cope with the higher voltages, Laurie, by using a kind of mux arrangement to mux a signal through different resistor ladders, we can attenuate the signal at different levels depending on the voltage range you're choosing. <clears throat> that then brings this down, and then we probably have a limiter like a. Zen a limiter as well, just for safety on the input voltage. That can then safely go to the ADC, this output, even though this may be up at like 15 volts. The only thing I'm not sure about here is if we can do that and switch these at a lower voltage. If we can't, the answer is what we do is we do an open drain to drive these, have these normally pulled up to whatever VDD should be and then um, the open drain outputs can drive those from a low 3.3 volt to do the step up. So that's one possibility. Um, and the 4066s are fairly low cost. Um, CD four zero. Well, they used to be. <laughs> they might not be quite as low cost now. Uh, right, so what happens if we go and look? No. I'll see. Let's see. No. I'll see. Let's see. Um, say we look for four zero six six on here. Uh, 
sort of price of these. Looks like there's lots of nice little copied versions. Um, yeah, these can be like 10 cents each here. What's this one? That's Texas Instruments one. So it's like 10 cents for that one. Is that the, um, yeah, this is the Chinese version of the data sheet. But this is this the HCT version? Or the 4066 no that's the 4066 one so that's what we were just looking at so these can be had for about 10 cents a piece so these easily um, fit the job um, so if you wanted an analog input what would you expect as the input connectors for that Laurie what sort of connectors Glasgow has an IDC connector like um, I can show you <clears throat> something like oh that's a bit big Uh, I do have some of these. Do you know what I have that are very good? Is the 10 pin versions. What size are those? 26 pins. Same with me. I do have some. I know I have. I think I remember. I have rather a lot. One possibility would be for yours this sort of thing. Uh, These IDC type connectors is what um, Glasgow uses, only with more pins. I think they use a 16 way. Um, probably wouldn't want to use a six, 16, um, but you could use a couple of these perhaps, and you can get right angled versions of these. The good thing about this sort of thing is you can also get. Uh, connectors like this sort of thing already made up DuPont on one end and kind of IDC on the other and then they just fit in to these connectors yeah if you want to make kind of logic probes so you could have imagine those at the end like a right, ang right angled version of those perhaps. Let me see if I can see a, I um, wonder if I can have one here. Uh, no, that's, that's, it's going to be difficult to show it on here because I've already disconnected the schematic from the um, from the PCB and if I add any more on and try and reconnect it to show you the footprint it's going to complain bitterly um, 
Lori says, oscilloscopes tend to have BNC or SMA connectors, although portable ones sometimes have smaller connectors. Basically, anything I could get an oscilloscope probe for. Yeah, well, hmm. oscilloscope probes require BNC connectors. Um, like, like this one. Hold on. Of course, they're all completely tangled up. So this is a, a scope probe here. And what you have, obviously, at that end is the BNC connector. These are like 50 ohm type connectors. And then you have your probe at the other end. But these connectors, or the male version of these, are not cheap. They're expensive. And you'd need right angle ones to go on the tile. And you could probably only forget, fit one or two on there. Um, so I'm not sure um, how useful that would prove, frankly, in our situation. I mean, if you were making a proper, you know, high quality analog input for an oscilloscope application and you'd use a high quality ADC, right? rather than just this kind of starter kit. What are your thoughts, folks? What are your thinkings? I think oscilloscope probe connectors on the starter kit would be taking it too far. It certainly put the cost up too high. But if you wanted to go this kind of route, pretty doable at low cost. I think doing a dedicated oscilloscope probe is a good idea with a high speed ADC. But I think that's probably uh, a project in itself, or a tile in itself, should I say. Rather than the starter. Um, could we do a kind of Glasgow type tile? It's a bit more tricky. Not sure if we could do that economically on the start tile because you'd have to have level converters in and out. Those are also rather difficult to get hold of at the moment. And they need to be bi-directional.
So again, not necessarily a starter one. Unless it was very limited. In terms of voltages. Uh, I'm not sure what people starting with FPGAs are likely to want. Well, it's not necessarily starting with FPGAs, but starting with Black Edge. I mean, if they're starting with FPGAs, they might not go for something as equipped as a Black Edge. They might start with something like a really low cost um, FPGA board from China or something. I don't know. Depends what they're trying to achieve. If they're just going to just do a bit of, um, you know, build a Risk Five soft core, then um, Black Edge isn't something that's really going to deliver them much benefit. You can do that pretty much anything. If, however, you want to start connecting things up to the real world, um, then your requirements are slightly different. Then you're talking about interfacing in one way, form or another. And in particular, modular interfacing in. That's what we're talking about. So it needs to be kind of more black centric, black centric, black edge centric, rather than just FPGA centric. Just simply a case of why is somebody getting into Black Edge really? It's because they want those facilities. Uh, Laurie said, when I started, I was interested in driving lots of different input and output devices, particularly the ones that microcontrollers were not good at. Okay, well, that's a good clue. So what? What list off some examples, Laurie, and let's work out how we can can do that. VGA, okay, HDMI. We already have tiles for those. Um, LED panels. The LED panel thing is. I'm trying to remember what the connectors on those are. Hold on. I think they, they have IDC connectors. I remember rightly. Um, these sorts of things. this sort of thing right one two three four five wait a minute one two three four those yeah 18 it's nine by two Um, but when you connect, when you connect up to these panels, um, this is the data for driving them comes over this IDC cable, as I've, as I, as you can see there, but the power comes from two separate wires. Uh, I don't have one handy. You'd need like a, a power lead, you know, this kind of stuff 
to drive that. And I can't remember what those connectors are on the. Um, I don't think I've got one here. I mean, I've got an LED panel, but I'm not sure from ages since I've seen it. But they might have like. Um, Basically, it has separate connectors for the plus and minus, I think, in addition to the IDC cable. Uh, Icebreaker has a P mod for LED panels. That seemed to get some interest. Well, I think there was a phase where people were driving them and they were very hip. You know, that was like a rite of passage that you learned how to do it. Not just with FPGAs, but also with. Um, microcontrollers as well. I did have one of them. I'm damned if I can remember where I've got it. But they definitely use that kind of pinout, the IDC pinout on the side to drive the data lines. Um, yes, you could have the um, LED strips. In fact, the connectors that we're using on that starter board, these little baby ones, these are often used to interconnect LED strips. Strangely. I guess the other popular starting uh, thing is the LED 7 segment as well, which we also have in another time. I mean, could we perhaps combine that into the uh, equation and have one of those on the starter tile? Possibly. Um, it kind of works well on its own start to tile, I think, personally. But um, do we integrate a VGA connector into this? Is there any benefit to do it combining those two things? I mean, one advantage could be is we could also put the audio in. But I don't know how relevant uh, having a VGA output is. I think it's a good one for VGAs, um, good one for 
FPGAs because it's kind of difficult to do on a microcontroller, right? Um, but the advantage of having that on, say, a starter board is because it's a double tile, you could also put the audio connectors on the side because you know it's always going to be a certain orientation. Because currently we don't have the audio connectors on the VGA tile. Because if you remember when we did that, um, it was too tight. There wasn't room to have the audio connector next to the VGA connector. You know, within the aperture that we're allowed for the tile. If you remember that, that uh, I mean, we tried it, but it didn't work. Um, We could combine other things onto the starter tile like that. Audio is also popular. There's an interesting discussion on how to best do audio DACs on the 16 bit squared FPGA channel. I'm just wondering, could we do a kind of multi-function double starter tile that had, is there some way that so, well, we could have that so it had a VGA connector a seven segment display that would however mean and then audio connectors on one side and then on the other side, you could have those, some of those for the outputs, maybe. But then there wouldn't be any room for buttons if you went down there, down that route. A starter kit with just the P mod double tile and one other double tile is probably a good idea. I'm not sure, but I mean, yes and no. Do you want the P mod tile as part of the starter kit? I would say for folks like yourself, Laurie, and others that already have P mods, then having the P mod adapter is very useful but if it's a starter kit most people won't necessarily have p mods and they might not even be buying p mods maybe they prefer buying tiles so the p mod assumption might not be a good one yeah I, I can see your point about having two double double tiles so in other words having the starter kit one and the p mod one it's kind of neat it, it it fills all the gaps kind of thing 
I mean, it's certainly possible. And it's simple enough to build the PMOD ones. There's very few components on them. Plus, you can do prototypes on them, which is nice. But then what goes on, we still got to work out what goes on the starter, the double starter tile, which we haven't done yet. I mean, we're talking about different ideas, but we've got to settle on something and we've got to get it done because um, I really need to order it <laughs> with the other PCBs. Otherwise, we'll end up having to wait until next month for the next PCB order. Which brings us back to what should we put on the starter? I know we've gone off on a few tangents here. Let's just switch back to KiCad. Turn the browser off for a sec. Let's just. Switch back to this one. Back to that question of what do we put on here? I know we're going around a little bit in circles. You know, do we go for something like this? Lots of buttons, lots of outputs. Might be slightly overkill. Or do we go with a combination of a smaller number of buttons, smaller number of outputs, and then on the other side put something like a 7 seg or a VGA or something? What is the best sort of compromise, really? What do we think? I mean, mm. there is one other possibility as well. Um, Um, I was just thinking to myself, we could take some of these features and put them onto the PMOD tile. But I'm not sure. I mean, you could, for example, take the, a cluster of buttons and put those next to the single DMOD on the demo tile and have buttons on the demo tile for example um, or you could have some boosted outputs next to the D mod. Lots of different combinations to think about, but we've got to come down on something.
any preferences folks this is always quite difficult to decide Um, so we've got lots of ideas what we now need to do is narrow down I think it's nice to have some buttons I think it's nice to have some higher voltage outputs or outputs that are capable of dealing with higher voltage peripherals so I think the Darlington stuff works in that way I think these connectors work well so the question is how many do we need do we go the original route where we have just a bunch of buttons and a few higher voltage tile on one side and then maybe have something on the other side like maybe we could combine it with um, either a seven segment or a VGA um, you can see my dilemma saying combining with HDMI slash audio is another possibility it is the HDMI audio tile however does work by itself it doesn't necessarily gain anything by being on a double tile because you can get audio and HDMI on a single tile, Larry. The advantage with HDMI is that it's surface mount. Whereas if you try to add VGA, for example, it means having a board that you have to solder because the connectors require soldering. And does HDMI go on a starter tile? HDMI is pretty complicated stuff. I'd say that's more advanced. So I wouldn't say it was one of the things that you do necessarily to start with, but one of the things that you might do a bit later. I think in terms of if you were starting with things, things like seven segments are definitely up there on the starting front. VGA possibly, but even VGA is quite complicated. Um, from a HDL perspective. And HDMI is super complicated in terms of understanding I mean what we could have for example say you have this tile here and then you have some buttons on the right hand side and some uh, voltage outputs on the right hand side like we started with then on the left side you have a seven segment display 
the buttons could then be used to control setting a value on the seven segment display for example um, I mean, if you're using them in combination. And you could do things like timers that control things on the uh, higher voltage outputs that turn things on. <laughs> Someone said, given uh, plus one for the HDMI. People like that. Well, I know iPost likes that. Hi, iPost, by the way. <laughs> but I've already designed a, a HDMI standalone tile anyhow so what we're talking about iPads I don't know when you came in but uh, if you look toward the right hand side not my right hand side, that's my left hand side, but um, we're designing a starter tile for people that are gonna buy into this, not not like the development kit, but had like a starter kit. So the question is, what do we put on that uh, starter tile? In this case, we're looking at the possibility of a double double tile and then if you look across we've got some um, outputs that are boosted Darlingtons that are capable of driving higher voltage devices and we've got some buttons when we started off on the right hand side we had you know kind of five or six higher voltage outputs and four button inputs um, and then hadn't decided what we put on the left hand side we've now doubled up so we've got both on each side, but that may be overkill. But one of the things we're thinking is, well, can we combine this with some other things? Maybe have the seven segment on the left-hand side, four buttons on the right-hand side, and four or five higher voltage outputs. <laughs> yeah, so you've only just joined us. Uh, personally, I want a GPU tile with DVI and stuff. Yeah, that's not a starter tile. That's 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 a different thing. And we are, yeah, we have talked about that, and uh, we can do that. But that's definitely not starter tile stuff. Also, I'm thinking of something I can display my soft core from a control perspective. I could just use a LCD with buttons. Uh, like I did with N curses. That was from the host. You can still do that stuff from the host, by the way. Um, So you mean have the LCD driver on the left hand side? Like uh, an OLED driver or something similar. Or a parallel driver maybe. Sorry, uh, uh, like a FPC connector to plug a, an OLED into. But then again, as a starter thing, that means you have to get the LCD as well. That's going to put the cost up. One of the things we're trying to do with the starter kit 
is make sure it's below 150 euros for shipping purposes. Um, I post because otherwise we hit all sorts of shipping problems with customs and stuff. Um, we have to go through this kind of, you know, delayed shipping, just like Western's just gone through. Now Western's very understanding and talks to us a lot, but many customers would not um, would not be in that position and it's maybe their first experience with black edge so um, that's what we're trying to avoid um, yes but this would be beneficial in both those cases I post because we're talking about having it lower cost to start with Your shipping worked better than uh, Western's. I mean, how what's the distance between where I shipped it from and where Western is? 400 miles? Well, it's more like 3,000 miles to your place from my place I posted. Yours got there a lot sooner. <laughs> He's in Belgium. Which is, you know, virtually on our doorstep. But yeah, it's taken. He's he's literally only just received his kit. Uh, I post. I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Damn thing was stuck in customs. That's Europe for you right now. Well, it, it's Europe if you're shipping from the UK. So let me be specific. If you're shipping from within inside Europe, it's probably not a problem. But then again, you would have been paying tax automatically then. But yeah, this is a problem which is why we have to what we need to use is the support that electrons has in Europe for the IOSS the international one-stop shop that enables us to put a number on the package which says this has been custom duty paid so that it doesn't get held up in customs like uh, Western says and the only way we can do that is if the entire order is less than 150 euros. The moment it goes over 150 euros, you cannot use the IOSS, the custom slip slipstream um, mechanism, which is why this starter kit has to come under that. Sorry, you missed some of the um, background from that my post. But it benefits anyone else in the world as well because it's a low price starter kit. Yeah, GPUs it definitely leaves the GPU route. That's a much more specific case. You know, doing the GPU thing, you know, having a tile with HDMI and GPU on it is um, is an entirely different thing. That's not going to be cheap for obvious reasons. That's a different conversation entirely. This is about having an entry level starter kit for Black Edge. That's what this is about. By the way, um, something else, um, just to sidetrack for a moment. If you look down there, what you often see is the back of the black ice NXT board. And I was just wondering what to do with that space because I had some black edge stickers. So I thought I'd try one on the back. And this is what I get. Now, I wonder if I can. Let's do a new scene which is board cam and
uh, you can see it a bit more close up there. So I thought, oh, that'd be good. I just put the stickers on there because they're transparent. But the trouble is it looks crappy. Can you see what it does with the color? Um, because the surface is not completely flat because some of it has um, because some of it has uh, track or copper underneath of it and some of it, some of it doesn't it's an uneven surface so you can't actually get it to um, look consistent and I've rubbed this quite a bit trying to to do with that it's a shame because I thought oh put one of these stickers on there but it looks a bit crappy no I'm not going to laser etch it I don't have a laser etch here I post I mean there is one at uh, the hack space but uh, yeah probably not I was just kind of wondering is there an easy way to just put something on that uh, makes it a bit more interesting really than just that I mean if you've got an LCD on there it doesn't matter of course but like these ones although that's not running right now kind of good idea but it just doesn't doesn't work with those stickers which is unfortunate if you have the white background it might work but you don't have the white background because these stickers are actually transparent once you take them off the backing That's the backing. Transfers. I think transfers will have the same problem because it's an uneven surface, I post. That's what the issue is. That's why this isn't consistent in terms of its colouring because some of it sticks down fine, others it kind of holds up a little. Looks slightly better if you take some of the light away, but yeah. But that's. Um, that's just a side note. Back to the starter board. This one. What are we going to do? I'm just going to get a bit more water, folks. Just going to mute you for a sec.
back again. Um, one idea I've just possibly eliminated, putting the kind of IDC connector, i.e. the Glasgow-like connector on this, is probably not necessary if you've got the PMOD connector, because there is already a connector on there that could be one of these. We already have another one next to the DMOD that could be replaced with an IDC connector. We already have that facility. Um, that takes one off the list. Oh, gosh, where's the time? My goodness, it's nearly 10 to 10 here. Um, any preferences on what goes on the starter? I'm thinking what I'm favoring right now putting seven segment on the left side and then having the other outputs on the right with four buttons what do others think about that do they think it's a stupid idea you should just go with more buttons more IOs keep the seven segments separate um, any other combinations that people particularly like and you're banned from saying HDMI and or GPU I post it's a separate tile I think I'm losing everyone's interest now. They're switching off. Uh, are there any other questions as well? Whilst we have a little think about that, whilst I'm here, did anyone need to ask me anything else? How are you getting on, Weston? Well, in fact, I don't think Weston's here anymore. I think he's playing with his um, Black Edge. I know he was playing with it earlier. I did do a slight update to the PCF file because he needed the blade pinouts and they weren't in the PCF file. So I updated that earlier. He's gonna test that, make sure those are okay. Um, for some reason my Discord here is in the wrong position. Now's a good time to fire away any stuff. At me once I'm still around. Uh, Lloyd saying, adding an audio connector to the double tiles, if there's a spare IO, might be good. Yeah, not a bad idea. Uh, I post, I've been scrambling to get my CSR sub series complete, so I haven't had time to dive into the NXT. Yeah, now I understand I post. No pressure, mate. Seven seg. So if I put a seven seg on there, I could fit audio in as well, but it would have to come outside. I'd have the IOs for it. Um, uh, yeah, I post saying his new job starts on July the 11th. Exciting. So he's going to have even less time. Yeah. 
You will, but you've got the uh, new role to look forward to, which will be a good challenge. Yeah, so Laurie, if I did put a seven segment on this, there would be enough IOs left for a simple audio out, for example. Um, at the moment, seven seg takes 11 IOs um, because it uses eight for the segments and three to select the digit. However, one way that you can do it is by using d the decoder chip rather than um, rather than transistors. Or sorry, the uh, PFETs that we use. Um, I have decoders here that we can use, and those are basically two to four decoders. So those two inputs are all that we need to control the three digits. And that would leave two pins for audio if we needed to, which may be more suitable. Uh, what about small rectangular SPI display in place of the seven segment, um, seven, one or? I, I, I have thought about doing that in the future, but I'm having problems sourcing just the right size. I was thinking of having a little OLED that fits in that space. But again, that's not going to be a low cost option because those displays are more expensive. Um, but that will make a good tile in itself. Definitely. Um, Laurie saying even a mono audio is fairly useful. Yeah, but I can do stereo. That's what I'm saying. So if we did the seven segment, I'd still have two left over. I'm using the decoder rather than free transistors so we could do stereo and we could do audio in to the ADC and stereo out even Laurie and have them on the side so they'd have to go if you see where my cursor is here they'd be here coming out this side one Maybe two. I don't know if we could fit two in. One in, one out. Um, I post saying, what about garden type tile? So the garden tiles that... Um, if you've ever seen them, they're from Pimeroni. They're very good. We can't do the same kind of physical arrangement that they have because physically it wouldn't fit. But um, let's just turn this on because I can probably show this. I'm uh, only garden. I mean, they're very cool. They wouldn't fit here. Geograph. Um, Physically, um, you're thinking of this like breakout garden, and there's little boards that slot into the top. Physically, that's going to be too wide. That's 68 mil along. That's the same size as a um, Raspberry Pi Zero. Um, is that two different sizes they have? Small ones and a big one. Yeah, I mean they have garden with breakouts and we have blades which have similar functions. You know we can do similar things with blades to what they do with their breakout garden. Um, I post. Uh, I post is asking do the tiles need to fit perfectly or can they extend out? No breaking the rules, I post. They cannot stick out. But I mean, yeah, you could extend them out if you wanted to. You just got to be um, be careful because that may affect other tiles indirectly. 
but if you wanted a sticker mount you could I mean I probably wouldn't design one that stuck out personally it might uh, offend my design sensibilities So yeah, I think blades cover us where the breakout garden covers them. Will be my answer. I don't know if that's satisfactory. But we certainly couldn't fit these connectors in to our blade space. Um, I don't think that would work. I don't know, maybe we could get two small ones. I don't know how wide each one of those are. Um, I mean, what do you get? Uh, yeah, I mean, what you're getting here is... Um, oh. I didn't return much. What? How many pins have you got? Five or seven pin connectors. But what what are the IOs? Two I two C and one SPI. So that does that mean four plus four? i.e. eight pins. How would that work? There isn't eight pins. Oh, are they talking about the whole thing? Yeah. So one of those small ones here, if you look on the picture, one of those small ones there only has um, I squared C and interrupt. And even the big one has only CS SCLK, Mozzie, MISO, and GPIO and ground. So that has effectively one, two, three, four, five signals plus ground and free volt free. I mean, our blades already have six signals, so they are superior in number, although form factor may not be um, as useful as, say, the Pimeroni garden. Depends which way you look at it, really. I mean, we can do things like QSBI memory, which you couldn't do on a breakout garden. Um, you'd probably have trouble doing those uh, LCD drivers, although you might be able to get away with it with five. So yeah, I think we're covered blade-wise, um, to be honest. Although, good idea. Right, well, I think it's time for me to finish the stream. We need to finish this conversation down on Discord either today or tomorrow and decide what's going on this starter board. Otherwise, it's not going to get ordered. And I really do need to order these tomorrow. So I keep putting off the order to fit bits into it like this. Um, but yeah, it's late. We have some stuff to digest. Perhaps we can decide by tomorrow. Right, so I'm going to call it quits for now. That will do for the stream. I will be down on Discord to continue the conversation. I'll be around also tomorrow. But in the meantime, thank you for joining me, folks. Um, and speak with you all again very soon. Ciao.